Welcome to video number three of the ITRC fertigation series sponsored by CDFA or the PREP program. Uh, this one is relatively short. It deals with nitrogen management and the consequences on the environment. As a reminder, this is uh, one in a series of 24 or 25 uh, videos. And uh, we have a number of resources available for you. And, and this shows you the fertigation book, both in English and Spanish and how to get it. And as another reminder, we have a series of videos, uh, sort of like in lab format and then these lecture formats, and then a lot of other information that you might find useful at our website. Now on to uh, uh, fertilizer specifics. You can see from this uh, little pie diagram that about 66% of the California fertilizer tonnage in the year 2020 uh, was uh, some form of nitrogen. And uh, remember the, the P and the K are the other major nutrients. That's um, the P is phosphorus, the K is potassium. Uh, but nitrogen certainly dominates the scene. Now, uh, why do we need so much nitrogen? Well, it's different from the other nutrients. Um, the, unless the soil is a peat soil with a high organic matter, there just isn't much natural uh, nitrogen in there, especially in desert soils. On the other hand, the phosphorus and the potassium come from the weathering of soil materials themselves. And so, of course, you know, there's plenty of soil there that uh, is continuously weathering. Uh, we still have to supplement that, but uh, the fact is, is nitrogen is not there naturally. The uh, whole business of nitrogen leaching from the root zone, you know, going down with excess irrigation water or rainwater uh, makes it a little different from the other major nutrients. Nitrate, uh, as you recall, is an anion. It's negatively charged. So first of all, it's not attracted like a magnet to the cation exchange capacity. And then uh, also it doesn't uh, get tied up with uh, other uh, ions, with cations. It isn't like phosphorus, which will combine with um, uh, it, well, phosphorus is a, an anion, but it combines with calcium and magnesium and drops out like a rock. Nitrate doesn't do that at all. So the nitrate is found in the soil water, and uh, uh, whereas the other major nutrients are fairly immobile, they just don't move very much. Now, if, you're a, if you have a huge manure application from pig waste or something like that, uh, then you can just overload the system with phosphorus and uh, in the eastern states, they do have problems with phosphorus actually leaching out. But in the western U.S., you normally don't have that problem. It's, it's different. Now, the California Department of Food and Ag and the State Water Board, and the State Water Board, by the way, is the outfit that is responsible for the regulations dealing with the environment uh, related to water. They, they recognize that nitrates, now listen to this carefully, from both synthetic and organic nitrogen fertilizing materials. In other words, you know, when, when a uh, material converts to nitrate or if it's already in the nitrate form, it doesn't make any difference where it came from. It could come from manure or it could come from a fertilizer. The fact is it's nitrate and it will react exactly the same way. And after many decades of use, some of it does move down into the groundwater systems and there's concern because it may be a uh, problem health-wise. And um, so it's called a public health concern. And then by law, and I'll mention this again, the State Water Board is, is required to step in and address the problem. So to repeat, the Water Resources Control Board and the regional boards um, may have uh, different levels of interest, but they are required by law to address any surface or groundwater contamination problems. So uh, that was established years and years ago, decades ago, that that was their responsibility. As opposed to, for example, the Department of Water Resources, which is basically a utility that does um, planning for the overall water of the state and manages the uh, California aqueduct system. It's quite different. So there's a limit here. If you take a look at it, it says that there's a certain limit, 45 milligrams per liter or parts per million of nitrate um, is established as a, a health hazard. And if you take a look at the um, incidence of, of 
contamination, you do find it uh, throughout uh, certain areas of California. So they have to ensure safe drinking water for all California residents. So here's a bottom line to repeat it. Uh, and then we'll move on to other topics. But nitrates that are not removed uh, by the harvested crop uh, are in the soil water solution. And if uh, water uh, depercolates, either from rainfall or irrigation, it can move down below the root zone. And then, uh, so that's the first point. That's just a fact. Next one is that uh, high concentrations of nitrate in the drinking water can potentially cause health problems. And uh, it's designated specifically for infants and then for pregnant women is where the problem is especially high. But bottom line is it's, it's really prudent to do two things here. One is you apply the nitrogen fertilizers at the right time and with the right amount. And this is one of the places where fertigation really comes in. And then the second one is, that's definitely tied to it, is the irrigation water management. And we have two concepts. One is uniformity and the other concept is efficiency. Uniformity deals with how evenly the irrigation water is distributed to different plants throughout a field. It doesn't say that you have the right amount of water. It doesn't say if you have too much or too little. If you have a good uniformity, that just means that all the plants get the same treatment. Efficiency is a little complicated because uh, you, know, you can't have a super efficiency without good uniformity, but efficiency basically says, hey, if you put on one acre foot of water, um, what percentage of that was actually used by the plants. That's a little simplistic, but that's it. It's, it's quite different from uniformity. And I'll talk about that in more detail later. Now, the reason for the emphasis in nitrogen, again, is that number one, it's the one that has the uh, health concern uh, problems, and that's where you get the regulatory bodies coming in. But also, it's really complicated. Um, and, and there's a limit to how good you can be. And so what we're all trying to do is, you know, improve things, uh, not spend too much on fertilizer, get the maximum benefit for the crops, protect the environment and so on. But it is complicated. And that's why we're s slowly going through these things like what's ammonium, what's ammonia, what's nitrate. It exists in all these different forms, nitrate, urea, ammonium, ammonia. It gets fixed in the organic matter. And then the transformations, which I'll get into in a bit, uh, you know, where it switches from one form to another are, are not very predictable. And that's largely due to the fact that the uh, rate of transformation, let's say from ammonium to nitrate, depends on uh, the uh, micro uh, bacteria and so on that are in the, uh, in the soil. And then their activity depends uh, on one is their population and two is things like moisture and temperature and so the rate of conversion depends on the time of the year and then it's it's also difficult to predict crop yields now this is the first time i brought that in but basically when you're saying hey how much fertilizer do i have to apply what you're trying to do is you're trying to apply the amount you need to supply the crop well you have to have some idea of how much the crop needs. In other words, you need to know how many tons or bushels or bales or whatever are gonna be harvested, and then you try to apply the amount that matches that. But as you all know, crop yields go up and down. So that's a little difficult. It's easy to look at it afterwards, not so easy ahead of time. And then rainfall is a tough one. Um, you know, if you're growing lettuce or broccoli or something like that in the winter and then it rains, you're on a sandy soil, uh, well, it's kind of tough to hold that nitrate in the soil. So it's, it's not the easiest thing in the world. So we have concepts and we have details. In other words, how specifically do you do it? These are the key concepts or factors. They're the four R's. That means you apply the right amount of nitrogen, fertilizer at the right time, at the right place, and in the right amount. Now, if you think about it, um, the right place, um, you know, you can handle that if you if you put it in through the fertigation. So at least we got that down. The right type, uh, well, there, there are different types, and I'll go through that in terms of whether you want nitrates or ammonium and what type. Uh, and then at the right time, we'll also deal with that because you try to match the uptake of the plant. 
with the availability of nitrogen. And the right amount, of course, also deals with for that particular time and what your predicted yield is going to be. The DU, this is called distribution uniformity. And uh, basically it says, look at you're going to put this amount of nitrogen on. If you put twice as much here as there, which, by the way, would give you a DU of 0.5, um, it's going to be tough to, to really utilize this very well. So you want to put it on evenly. So then you finally get to irrigation. And if you're applying the water through the irrigation system, you cannot put the water on evenly unless you have a good DU for your irrigation system. So you need a well-designed, a well-maintained, and a well-operated irrigation system that can apply the right amount of water with next excellent DU. And the fertilizer should just go along with it. So the irrigation system is really ab absolutely a key here. Now, in the early days of uh, really looking at uh, nitrogen management and groundwater nitrate concentrations and so on, and uh, when the uh, boards were, were looking at um, what kind of regulations they ought to come up with, I chaired uh, an agricultural expert panel, and we came up with this concept of A over R, or called the AR ratio. And basically it says this, Without knowing all the details of why and how and when and all that, the bottom line is this. If you could apply, that's the A, the same amount of nitrogen as was removed during the harvest plus stored in the wood, if those were equal, you'd have an AR ratio of 1. Now, that's impossible, of course, because... Um, uh, now, it might be possible for a season, but not over the long haul. Over the long haul, um, you have to look at it, but that would mean you're 100% efficient. Now, take a careful look at the words here. This does not say nitrogen uptake, and that's going to make it a little complicated. It says nitrogen removed during harvest. Just kind of run those words together. In other words, how much is removed from the field? Basically, it's what's called a, like a water balance. This is a nitrogen balance. It says, hey, you put this on, and then it gets removed from the field by the crop, by the or via the harvested crop. And then that would be, wow, that'd be a really good balance. And then the stored in the wood thing has to do with the fact that trees and vines grow over time, and they store some nitrogen in that wood, we call it. So the, the question is, is how good can you get here? Again, to repeat, you cannot get an AR ratio that is, is uh, one, uh, except maybe for a particular season. But long haul, if you look at season after season and all the conversion rates and so on, it, you just can't do it. You have to have some leaching, as a matter of fact, just to remove the salt from the soil. And uh, along with that salt is uh, some of the nitrates going to go out. But um, as I mentioned earlier, there are lots of unknowns, uncertainties. So really the question is, and this is one for the um, regulation bodies, is, uh, well, uh, could you get a ratio of 1.1? How about 1.2? You know, this, this makes a huge difference. You might be interested to know that if you take a look at, at historical recommendations for nitrogen applications that are done by extension services, you know, the University Extension Services in California and other places. If you actually took a look at this ratio based on what their historical recommendations were for optimum yields, you get AR ratios often of two to one, uh, which doesn't look so good from an environmental standpoint, just to show you how complicated things can be. So the AR ratios, uh, you know, those things I just mentioned, like how good can you get, those are discussed in a lot more detail in Chapter 9. Uh, we won't handle any more of that in this uh, video series. <clears throat> uh, along with the, uh, the Chapter 9, we do have two modules, uh, videos at the very end of this series that uh, take a look at the perspectives of various stakeholders. Um, you know, there are people uh, dealing with environmental justice, people whose primary focus is the environment, and then there are also the people who actually have to farm, and the consultants who bri provide recommendations and so on. And each group has a little different perspective 
and what's possible and what should be done. This concludes the third video in the 24-25 uh, uh, video set that we have for you on fertigation. We'll see you at the next uh, video.